I can draw the sun with the stars and the moon. I can draw anything. How about you? Ready, set, draw! <laughs> My name's Roxy Monroe and I write and illustrate children's books. And one kind of book I do a lot of are maze books. So today I'm going to teach you how to do a random Roxy reversing maze. Ready, set, draw. So first I'm going to draw our page. And we're going to start off using pencil so we can erase. So in this case, I'm going to make a maze where you start at a parking lot and you take a trip up to a picnic table. And then we're going to work our way back on a different maze. So this is going to be the maze. Now the idea with the maze is to make it look visually complicated. So when people look at it, they go, wow, you did that? But actually, it's a very simple process. First, you start with the maze path. So I'm going to make a parking lot down here. And then we're going to, let's say we come up here. And by the way, one thing about mazes is that you want to keep the width of the line, the pathway, pretty consistent. Not too thick and not too thin. So we're coming up here, and here we're going to have our picnic table. And we're going to make a little sign so when people come up here, they know they take this one. So we're going to go up here, and we're going to draw this in pencil. So this is our first maze path, right? That looks pretty simple. Now we're going to take our maze path back. So what we do is we make the whole maze path first. That is the key to the whole thing. Now the key to a maze also is that you do not ever let the paths cross. You have to make sure that some of them go under and some go over in order to keep the two paths separate. So here we're going to draw a little bridge. So this maze path is going to come down here. I'm going to draw a little bridge and it comes out here and then hey it actually is going to come over this area you see you don't let them cross and it's going to sneak back like this and here it kind of doubles up we're going to make a point that you go this way so that you know that you go out this way and back this way that's okay but how do we make it interesting well this is when you need your eraser. So now let's say we want to make a false path. We want to trick people. So we're going to come like that. And then we're also going to make it come over. Let's say we make it come over here. And then down here, we're going to make it come to another false area. And then over here, coming back, let's say we make it go out like that and also out like that. Now it's starting to look complicated, but we know that there's really only one way out and one way back. Let's make another false start over here and make this come up and go like that. All right, so there's our maze path, right? We're gonna start using the Sharpie. So here we go. And we're gonna make our original maze path, remember? So this one comes all the way out Remember we said we don't let any of the paths cross each other. Now I'm going to erase all the pencil lines. So you see, initially we're just making the maze path. However, this is too boring. So what we're going to do next is start to add to this. Remember we said that this was a picnic. We're going on a picnic. If this maze is going to a, from a parking lot to a picnic, it makes kind of sense that there would be a river in here. So let's add a river. So here's a river flowing through, coming down, and then it kind of widens out. So here's the river. We're going to make the river black. So remember that I said we must make it visually complicated even though we know that the path is fairly simple. So first I'm adding trees, kind of, they can just be like lollipop trees, you don't have to be a really good artist. And I'm doing that in the lower part, I'm making kind of um, just normal deciduous trees. But up at the top, because we're going higher, 
uh, in this park. I'm putting evergreen trees, pine trees, as you go up, just so all the trees don't look alike. I'm adding a few rocks here and there because a the park would have rocks in it. We're putting some deer in. So I'm, and you can also make this a finding game, say find the deer because the deer are hidden around in this. One. Then um, we've already added our river, but I'm adding a canoe to the river. I'm adding another picnic table with an umbrella. I'm adding a couple of people playing volleyball over here in the lower part. And now we're adding little people walking along the pathway. So again, the trick is to make it look complicated even though we know it isn't that complicated. So now you've basically finished your maze. It's always very nice to kind of add so that things look um, very, as I say, visually complicated and all of one kind of pattern. So when you, if you did this maze and you saw how simple it was and gave it to your friends, they'd go, wow, you made that maze? And then they will try to solve it. Now I'm going to show you how, uh, in case you forget, and by the way, it'd be very cool to color all these in. It could also be a coloring maze. So now we're going to solve the maze. So what we did was we parked our car and we came around here and we came around here. We went under here, came around here had our picnic, and then we left and we came around here, all the way up, we went underneath this bridge, and we worked our way back through the forest, back to the parking lot. I just want you to remember that you can add whatever you want. You can add birds, you can add people walking dogs. The more you add, the more complicated it gets and the cooler people think you are for doing this very, very complicated maze. So here's my maze. How did you do? We would really love to see it. Find out how to share yours in the post below.